Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee Inc. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how we use Separation Studio Next to separate a six color screen print, which is a vector-based spot color design. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to easily separate your artwork, how to consolidate your colors to allow for printing on a smaller screen printing press. And by that, I mean reducing the amount of screens needed to print a design, how to add an underbase to your design, how to add strokes and chokes to your layers, and finally, how to use our free exposure guide um, to make registering your screens a little bit easier. If you wanna get your hands on some separation software for your studio, I've got some discount codes for you in the description below. They are on a first come, first serve basis, so I'll try and update them regularly as they get used. And later on in the video, I'll show you exactly what products they are for and how to get the discount code for your studio. This is the design that we're going to be printing in today's video. It's the Out of Luck Ombre T-shirt. We're also going to be doing some hoodies. And please remember that we fund this YouTube channel by the sale of our Blind Maggot merchandise. We like to give all of our squeegee viewers £10 off when they enter squeegee at checkout in the coupon section on the blindmaggot.co.uk website. In this part of the video, I'm gonna show you how I size my image ready to bring into Separation Studio next. I like to do this in Illustrator because it's relatively quick. And also what I found is that I accidentally brought in this huge image in Separation Studio, and then Separation Studio was taking a little bit longer to figure out all the separations just because it's got so much data that it was trying to work with. So if I constrain the proportions in Illustrator, it's gonna make it a little bit quicker. So I make these spec sheets for all of my designs. This just helps me compile all of the decisions that I've made, my artwork, the Pantone colors are on hand, and even the size breakdown. So just here I have my image as a vector, and I've specified there that I want it to print 22.5 centimeters wide. I'm gonna copy it, and I want to save it as its own little PDF file. So I open a file and I'll paste that artwork only in there. And then just in the properties here, I'm gonna make it 225 mil, which is 22.5 centimeters wide. There we go. And then I'm gonna make the artboard fit it. Like that. An important thing that I found is if you save it as RGB color mode, that just works better in Separation Studio Next. It's going to make these really high quality raster separations for us. And um, saving it in RGB color mode has just worked a little bit better. Also, you need to save it as a PDF in order for it to look at this image as being something that it wants to separate as spot colors. So I'm gonna save it as out of luck to sep in my file there and I'm going to change this to PDF. It's just going to be an Illustrator default and that's ready to go. Once you have Separation Studio Next open, you can go ahead and open your artwork file that you've just saved. So mine is this one. And as you notice, it's going to, as soon as it, as soon as you start opening the file, it's going to start generating some separations. So these are the separations that it's already generated for you. Then we have a preview window here and it, it's got lots going on already. But the first thing that I like to do is to set the t-shirt color. So if you just click this icon for textile, it will bring up the textiles for you. So you have got some generic kind of brand colors. Um, my specific t-shirt is like a seasonal color, so I've gone ahead and put in a little extra swatch there. And then I can select that ombre color, and then I can click the t-shirt icon, and it'll set the background of the artwork to that t-shirt color. This is just handy to make sure that your artwork's gonna look good on the t-shirt color that you're choosing, and none of the colors look washed out or anything like that. So that's all set. 
I can just close that one. And then the next thing I like to do is to load up all of the colors that I'm actually gonna be printing with in real life. So you click on this ink icon and it brings up lots of different ink systems. So I tend to go for, I'm, what I'm gonna be printing with this is Pantone. So if I go ahead to the Pantone system of inks, it's got all of these little swatches with the Pantone color reference next to them, which is really awesome because yeah, this is really handy when you actually get printing. And uh, I've already determined what all my Pantone colors are going to be in my file. So what I can do is go ahead and assign the Pantone colors to the layers at the bottom here. So for example, I've got 132C is gonna be this dark kind of ombre color here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick 132. You can actually start typing and it kind of forwards it to it, but if I select 132 and then I can touch this ink pot here and then assign it to the layer which it corresponds to. So it's gonna be this one that ends in 19. I can assign it to that separation and press okay. And you can see it didn't really change the color because that's the color that I've already predetermined I want it to look like anyway. Um, now I'm ready to go ahead and assign all of my other Pantone colors. So you might find that your Pantone color isn't in this section. You can add spe uh, special ones to this little custom icon here. So I've added 7555C. So I can go ahead and assign that to its layer as well. And that's gonna be this one that ends in a six. And I can go ahead and do the other colors. And now we're all done assigning the colors that I want to be printing onto the separations that I'm gonna try and print with. I know that when I was assigning my colors to the artwork that it didn't look like it was changing it drastically. But let's say you wanted to print um, the body of this rabbit in a completely different color for some reason. We can assign different colors and then you can see how dramatic it looks on the preview. So I can pick something like 806 and I can assign that to the layer, which is the body. So it's this 7699. So that's already ticked, I can press okay. And then you can see what happens when you're throwing in different ink colors. So I can go ahead and put my proper color back in. That's in my custom palette. And on the mock-up, it's gonna show my proper color again in a second. There you go. Now. I have a six color press. That means that I can print six of these separations, but I have seven down here. And I think it's because it's kind of found extra white for some reason. So if I isolate this layer here, it doesn't seem to have much on it. But if I zoom in, I've got this tiny little speck of white that it's picked up. It might be when I was uh, making the design, I, that's, I accidentally colored that as gray or something. So what I can do is just combine it into the white layer. So if I just drag it onto the white and then press multiply, it's kind of grouped it in with the white. So now I've just got my six layers. If I can go onto this proof positive, that shows all of the layers together so that you can go around the image and double check that you haven't done anything silly. We often get asked how to put an underbase under these kind of designs. So for this particular design, we're not gonna use an underbase, but I wanna show you how easy Separation Studio Next has made it. So they've just simply got this little feature at the top called base, and then it brings up some properties. So it says, do you want to put a base under all of these layers? So you can toggle on and off these, uh, you can say apply to all, you can dictate the choke, so that means like you can pull the underbase in proportionally underneath the colors, and you can set how many points you want that to be, and then you can simply press apply. So I'm gonna show you what an underbase might look like if I was printing this on a dark garment, for example. So if I press apply, it's gonna bring up the underbase here. So I can click on that. That was amazing, by the way, because we used to show people how to do that in Illustrator and you can easily make errors and add in too many things into the underbase. So if I isolate that, you can see here that it's 
just made it automatically as its own separation. We don't need this, so I'm actually gonna delete that by just dragging it into the bin, which is under here. So I've just got my layers as normal now. I want to show you this other feature on Separation Studio, and it's called this spread feature. This is where you would put a stroke onto all the different layers. However, it's important to have the layer order of how you're going to actually print this design set up just before you do that spread. So I'm gonna press on this, which is called Press Fit. So this is a really handy screen where you can drag and drop your colors that you're gonna print onto the screens on your press. So my press is a cruiser and it is a six color. If you had more or less heads on your printer, you can go ahead and toggle this down or up. So I'm gonna start with this white layer on my first screen. So you literally just drag and drop it on, which is really cool. And then I'm gonna drop my other colors in where I want them to be printed. And I'm gonna end with my black layer as the last color that I do. You can also go in here and toggle on and off the textile if you press the green part of the press, you can see all of the images. So you can toggle on the textile like that. And it just means that your black is being printed last and it's gonna sit on top of those other layers in reality and on this mock-up. So I'm ready and I'm sorted with my layer order. So I can press apply. What this is gonna do as well is in your separations when you print them, you've got an option to like write what screen order is gonna be on that positive. That's just a handy tool for when you're setting up your press so you know what location to put each screen. I'm now ready to put my stroke on. So on this software, they call it spread. So I can just click this spread icon here and I can dictate how much stroke is gonna go on each separation. This particular image is relatively difficult because all of the colors are just butting up against each other. So to just give ourselves a little bit of leeway, we're gonna add a 0.5 point stroke to all of the layers. So I'm gonna go in here and change this to 0.5. And if you wanted to, you could toggle on and off certain layers and that just depends on how your artwork's set up and how much tolerance you need and if the colors are butting up against each other. So I'm gonna apply it to all and I'm gonna press apply there. And then you can keep referencing this mock-up here because that's applied the 0.5 stroke. I just wanna show you a really fat stroke so you can see what I mean by that. Let's do like two and apply. Then you'll see this change quite a lot when it's uploaded. See that two looks disgusting. So we'll go back into our spread, change it back to 0.5 and we'll know that that's not really gonna make a huge difference to how the artwork looks, but it's gonna make registering it and printing it much easier. Separation Studio Next makes it really easy to add your own registration marks into each of the separations. Once you're happy, you can go ahead and press print and then bring up the marks and layout section. Here you'll find they've already got these stock templates with registration marks already added and when you print they'll be added to each of your separations. However, I want to use my own template that works alongside my exposure guide which I use in the studio. If you want to do this too, I'm going to have links in the description as to where those are found and you can upload them yourself onto Separation Studio. So in my categories I'm going to look at my squeegee templates. I want to use my large screen template for this one because I think it will fit well. So I'm going to go ahead and add my own template. I can select my large screen standard template and it's already got my special registration marks with these references that refer to my exposure guide, which I can show you later. If I toggle through my images, I can make sure that the extremes of my image all fit within inside my template and now I'm literally ready to print. So I'm just going to go ahead and press print right now. I just wanted to let you know at this point that I have a RIP software already pre-downloaded onto my computer and this is called Accurip. Accurip works in conjunction with Separation Studio Next 
and it just means that my printer prints nice rich film positives for screen printing. If you want to know more information about that, I've done a whole video here which runs through why I use Accurate for printing film positives. Before we start screen printing these t-shirts, I wanted to quickly show you how you can get a discount off your Separation Studio Next software. So you'd go to the website which is called solutionsforscreenprinters.com and then on there you'll find their software page and it's this one here, Separation Studio NXT. Once you've brought that up, you can scroll down slightly and you can see that there's this package here for $229. If you add that to cart, then I can show you where to put your discount code. So in this little coupon code section here, you can add the discount codes that I've got in the description below. All of these codes are single use only, so it would be really handy if you let me know if you've used one so that I can see when they're being run out and I can go and ask Separation Studio for some more codes to put in there. But that should get you some money off your software. Now we have our acetates printed, we can expose our screens with our exposure guide. Following that, we're going to print our six colour design and see how the registration comes out. Just a quick note, if you're using our exposure guide, which is this clear overlay, we actually put it on top of our screens and we match up the numbers and grid references onto the film positives to our guide. That just means that we've got the placement of where we're going to expose pretty accurate. It's not millimetre perfect, but it's really quite quick. It just stops you having to like tape on positives and that type of thing. So I can quickly go ahead and move my guide over the other two screens, match up the letters and the registration lines on the grid, and then we're ready to expose. We've just finished printing the shirts and we did some hoodies as well and they all came out great. Um, the registration was really easy and putting that little 0.5 stroke on Separation Studio worked a treat. If you want to grab Separation Studio for yourself, there are discount codes in the description below. Also, if you want to support us by getting one of our Blind Maggot t-shirts, you can use discount code SQUEEGEE on the Blind Maggot website to get £10 off. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to be informed and get more videos like this.